Hello ELC3338, this is Dr. Keith Schubert and this is my second of my penance videos. What I plan on talking about right now is to discuss the idea of some different protocols on here. So there's, in particular on cash, there's a number of different ones. One that we're going to discuss the difference through is what's called right through versus right back cash. So, let me put this, oh, well, that pen isn't working so well. Let's see if this one, okay, there we go. So right through versus right back. Okay, now the idea of this right through cache, which is our first one that goes on. Imagine I've got my CPU here. And that CPU has several layers of cache that's going on. It's got a level one cache, and we'll just concern right now, we'll say level two cache, and then that goes down to RAM. Now, under this situation, the CPU is gonna write to level one cache. Now, level one cache is gonna be really pretty small. Level two cache will be fairly decent size. Say this is, you know, whatever, 64K or, or whatever, something on that score. And this is going to be, say, a meg or two that's going on. Now, this cache has to be highly responsive to the CPU. If I'm doing a write-through, I can write and it'll update both this cache and this cache. Now, you might say, well, why would I want to update both caches at the same time? Well, that means both of these caches are synced. So... This cache is the little one. If you kind of think like we were talking about the, the targets as it goes out, right? You got your registers, you got level one cache, you got level two cache, and then eventually RAM. Well, ideally, what you want is that the upper level ones can throw away their results very easily because lower levels of cache are already holding it. So it doesn't matter. You know, as long as they have updated the results down the chain, you're good. Well, on a write through cache, when the CPU here updates level one, level one simultaneously is updating level two. And because it's going to update both simultaneously, that means level one can throw out any result inside it and you don't have to worry about whether or not you're going to lose something. Level one and level two are synced in this sense. If it's in level one, it's in level two. So that's kind of a nice feature. That allows level one to get rid of things quickly, not having to worry about updates, and therefore it can respond fast to any requests from the CPU. So that's the advantage of a write through cache, is that it's got that quick sync so upper levels can go up. Its main advantage is in a hierarchical cache, and for essentially very fast access time to go through because of that already synced and working together nicely type feature. Now, the question is, what's a write back cache? Well, write back cache does not do that. It basically stops it at a level. You might say, okay, why would I ever want that type of situation? Because they're now not going to be synced. So this time, let's say I have a CPU and I've got cache. Now, imagine I've got a bunch of these different situations. CPU going to cache. And let's say this is a multi-core system. So these are all hooked together and they eventually connect out to RAM. Now, at a certain point, both of these have to be integrated. So if they want to access RAM or whatever, some lower level of cache, they have to go through some combining area and they can fight over this resource. In this case, I've drawn it as if it's a bus. We'll stick with that at the moment. All right, so if this cache wants to go to RAM or whatever levels below it, it's gonna have to get access to this bus and get access to this. And when it has it, it's exclusive. This other one can't use it. So since both are going to want it, and I could have many, many cores in here, so therefore there could be a lot of contention for this bus. I want to reduce traffic down here. If I, when I update this cache, 
I don't update here, it reduces the traffic. And it's possible that this one could update a particular value and then could update another one. Now I could update the same value again, or remember when I'm dealing with these, I'm actually dealing with a block. So I might have a variable X and a variable Y and a variable Z, dot, 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 all in the same block. And if I'm gonna update X, I'm probably gonna update Y pretty soon and probably Z. Well, if this is a vector where this is, you know, X0, X1, X2, even more likely that it goes on. And I could have up to 16 of these in a block. So it's very likely I'm gonna update a whole bunch of them. Well, if every time I'm doing a write through, I write it down, I could end up writing that block over and over and over again. That could get very ugly on this bus traffic. I don't want to do that if I can avoid it. So ideally, what I'd like to be able to do is just hold it and then just do a burst and write them all down when I need to. And I only write it when I need to. So I can probably catch a whole bunch of different writes and reads protected and then do an update. So that's the kind of the advantage of a write back cache. But that means that what's here is not there. So there's a difference between the two. So since this has been changed and it's not down here, that difference we call being dirty. Now we have to note that because I can't just delete it from here. If this value is the correct one according to the CPU and RAM has a different value, I have to update before I delete. So we had talked about there are different flags that are out there. We have to, in addition to the valid flag, we now have to add a new flag for write back which we call dirty. And if the dirty bit or dirty flag is set, it means this value in cache is different than what's in RAM. So before you delete it and say this might be called for by like, you know, least recently used area, it might say this is the, the least recently used item that's inside here. I need space inside my cache. Delete this one out so there's more room. If that's going to happen, I have to check the dirty bit first. If the dirty bit is set, I can't just delete it. I actually have to do a write and write the values down to my RAM before I can delete it out of cache. Now, I don't have to tell the CPU about this. This is something that cache handles all on its own in the background. If the CPU is waiting for that for some value before it can finish, the CPU is going to end up waiting. It doesn't know why. It will just end up waiting for this process to happen. The advantage of it, though, is this happens rarely. So you can usually figure somewhere between 10 to 20 percent of a values in a write back cache are going to be dirty at any given time, which means only 10 to 20 percent of the time will you have to do the update in case when you have to get new space inside the cache for a a new variable read. So it's possible while doing a read to a write back cache, I might have to empty space out for the new variable I'm reading in, and that might require a write if the value you're getting rid of is dirty. So that creates a, a new kind of penalty that goes on. So let's take a look at that. The write through cache is pretty straightforward. You don't have to worry about this, but the write back you do. So what that means is we've got for our CPI, we've got our still our one plus, now in this case we've got whatever our fraction is for a memory op. And then I've got my access time to get into the cache. Now the access time to the cache and then there's a chance that I have a miss rate, right, that I miss the cache. And then that's going to cost me whatever it costs. We'll just assume it's one level of cash at the moment. So that's going to cost me whatever it costs to go down to RAM. However, in addition to that, this is now allocating a new variable that goes in. That means there's also a chance that it's dirty. So there's a fraction that the dirty bit is set. And if that dirty bit is set, then I'm going to have to pay for RAM again because I'm going to have to pay to save this before I can clear it out. Now, 
in our case, let's just take simple numbers as it's going in. Let's say the fraction of our memory operations. I'll just pick the same number we've been using for a bunch of these, which is a quarter. We'll say that our access time, I'll pick just two cycles for our access time. Let's say our miss rate is, let's say, 0 0.01, about 1% 1 of the time. But let's say it's dirty 10% of the time. And we can pick our RAM, oh, we already have our, oh, we have our, let's see, RAM access time is going to be, we've been using 150, so we'll stick with 150. So what that means for us is my CPI is 1 plus 1 fourth times, I've got 2 plus my miss rate is a hundredth, 0.01 times, and I have to pay RAM 150 plus 10% of the time, I have to pay the 150 again. So that's 15 plus 150, that gives me 165 divided by 100, so CPI 1 plus one quarter, two plus. So I had 165 divided by 100 is 1.65. So that gives me 3.65 divided by four, that's 0.91 and some change. So that gives me 1.91 and some junk. All right, now they have 9125, but it's not really the important part. If you notice, straight off the bat, if I'm just looking at this as a spot, it looks like I get a little bit worse performance that's going on for our system because I end up paying this extra 0.15 inside here. Now, at one level, yeah, that's true. I am paying a little bit more. However, it means that I'm often going to have a lower chance that there's going to be this traffic contention on the bus. So I'm paying a little bit at this level, right, from the CPU to the, to the cache, and very often we'll put a, another cache level between, so this will be at least level two. But for our sake, we just have one. I pay a little bit more there because I've now reduced traffic here, which means I'm also reducing the contention when I need to go out to the bus, but that would be interference from the other system. And if I allow this to be too contentious, it doesn't just mean I'm blocking them, it means they're going to block me at times too, which means my access time to RAM could go up because RAM might be busy servicing something else. If I can reduce that contention, I don't end up paying extra off here. So that's why I'm willing to tolerate a little bit inside this dirty area to prevent myself from having a more severe uh, payment of, of loss because some other system was on. And when you get up to, you know, some of the Xeons that you can get now have 12 cores or so, you can imagine how much contention there could be when you're trying to access RAM on these. And we try to do as much multi-level cache and everything else to hide that. But one of these tricks is right back to reduce traffic that goes down. And then we want to hide this extra penalty cost by handling better cash at, at higher levels. So putting more layers in to protect things. So this gives you an idea of what's the difference between a right back versus a right through. Um, just remember kind of your, your net goals. Right through updates not only the level you're at but the level below it. And that is useful at the high levels to reduce problems. Um, right back cache is used for low level ones, particularly just before you integrate multiple different systems coming together to a shared resource, and it's designed to reduce contention. And the big trick is you get this dirty bit, and the dirty bit potentially causes you to have to do this here, where we have to update the RAM 
in order to get free space to do stuff. So anyway, there you go. That gives you a little more to read and think on. And you can look in the book on this as well. So have a good day. Bye.